Hey everyone, this is Sage Valentine, aka Etherblade, and this is my review of The Red Road, Season 1, Episode 3, The Woman Who Fell From the Sky. The <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. The title of this episode comes from an old Seneca legend about a young woman who falls ill and her father puts her by a tree so that she can get better and somehow... I guess he cuts a hole in the tree or somebody cuts a hole. I'm trying to get it correct. Either someone cuts a hole in the tree or he cuts a hole in the tree and the daughter falls through the tree down onto the back of a turtle. Whereas um, the turtle takes her through this world made of water and she ends up somehow on the turtle and I guess they stop and she somehow morphs into this tree and it's hopefully I got the legend correctly but um it's basically talking about Jean Jensen from the show and how she is slipping into this darkness within her mind that's creating all these things all these sounds all these voices the stuff that she's seeing like she's basically it's basically like I guess a, a parallel or a parable to the fact that Jean has lost touch with reality. Okay, now I'll start my review. Paul Jr. and uh, Mike Parker have a plan. They plan to rob this nursing home because, according to Mike, the security guard likes to take a smoke at a specific time, and he knows, like, exactly what time. And, like, Junior's kind of shaky about it, but Mike was like, listen, he'll be coming out pretty soon. He comes out, and... Phil whacks him in the back, and I think maybe he hits him in the back of the head, whacks him with the back of the axe, and knocks him out. Um, Junior comes in with a paintball gun as they all go in, and he makes sure to shoot each and every security camera with, the, with like, orange paint. Paul has an axe, Paul, Phil has an axe, and <laughs> Paul is the little boy who was hit. Phil has an axe, and he takes that axe and breaks into the, nur the nursing home's pharmacy. They grab as many pills as they can, and as they're racing out, Junior forgets his goggles, and he, Phil makes him run back, so this patient, this older woman in, like, this pink bathrobe, she sees him, but she doesn't know what to make of him, so Junior's just like, well, he said, do you need anything? He's like, water. She said, yes, so he brings her water from this, like, water um, cooler, and she says, what are you doing here? Why do you have that mask on? He's like, it's just a dream. Don't even worry about it, and the woman just goes on. Um, he thinks, and when he gets outside, he doesn't see the car, so he thinks that, um, Phil left him, but Phil didn't leave him. He just circled back, and he came back, and he got him. Um, we see the next scene, Harold punching a bag. I guess he's still frustrated after having to commit Gene, because if you didn't see, I guess, the first episode or the second episode, and you're just tuning in, um, Gene basically is losing her mind because of the combination of her brother dying when she was younger and the fact that she hit this little boy. I think even before she hit this little boy with her car, um, her mind was slowly going, but this is just accelerating the dissension into um, insanity that uh, Rachel's basically falling into. Um, let me see. I'm going to make sure that I get everything that I have here. Um, Kate comes in. Kate's the youngest um, Jensen daughter. She comes in and she's asking when the mother should come home because when is mom coming home because, you know, she wakes up Rachel and Harold's just aggravated. He's like, listen, he said, I need your help. I need you to help me out, which I think is kind of messed up. I mean, I know he needs help, but um, Rachel's the oldest, so if anybody should be doing this, it should be Rachel, but they can't count on Rachel because Rachel's so out of control. They can't even, I don't even know how they can even control her, so I guess Kate is the second best for this. Um, let me see. Harold's at the police station. The members of the Lenape tribe are outside, along with Marie's brother, Matt, and uh, a new character named Sky Vanderdeen, which I actually uh, mentioned last video. She is the lawyer for the Morgans, who are the, um, the husband and wife of the child that Jean Jensen hit. 
with her um, truck. And uh, Harold's um, boss is basically asking him, you know what, did Jean mention anything else about that crash? Does she remember anything? He lies and he says no, but we know sitting home watching that she definitely is like slowly but surely remembering things and she's understanding that she did something. She hit that child and she shouldn't have hit the child. Um, at the school, Junior tells Rachel about robbing the old folks home. Like, he's, like, so proud of it. And he's not worried, but I kind of think he should be because I think that older woman might remember. If she doesn't remember, she may blurt something out to somebody and it'll come back. Even though they got those cameras, I mean... Did they get all the cameras? I'm just speculating and trying to find something here because it's just the whole scene went too perfectly for me. So there has to be something else. Like maybe that woman in that pink bathrobe remembers them or remembers a junior actually. Jean's at the psychiatric hospital. She feels like nothing's working with medicine wise and uh, she doesn't feel like herself. The doc is giving her antipsychotics, which her husband can't understand why. And I'm like, listen, your wife is like zoning in and out. She thinks she's hearing things like you're not paying much attention to her. You're not really watching it. Like sometimes in this episode, like in the previous episode, Harold just seems like he loves um Jean, but it's like he's ready for her to get over this. And apparently the death of her brother is like weighing down on her even more than before. Um, Jean somehow glances at a newspaper and sees a headline for the little boy who was hit, and it says he's getting worse. She glances at her bed and sees the little boy twisted up on her bed. When she glances again at the headline, the headline's gone, and it just freaks her out for a minute. So she looks at Harold, and Harold basically says, I wish you were dead. Which, honestly, he didn't say, but that's what she hears, because she's hearing voices, and, um... She heard that, and then the doctor had to kind of call her name to pop her out of whatever delusion she was in. The cops are calling the area for um, the Lenape Reservation for the college kid. Um, they're, like, near the water or whatever, um, which is funny because the boy's body is actually in the lake. They let us see that see in episode one that he's in the lake with, like, a weight around his ankles, like he's not going anywhere. Um... Harold ventures off by himself to go search and finds a sinkhole. And he basically makes the, he deduces that, you know what, maybe the kid fell in the sinkhole and he's at the bottom. But these two, he hears a gunshot and these two hunters come running over and they just look completely disgusted with his presence and the cop's presence. And they basically, like, when he asks, you know, has anyone ever fallen in this sinkhole or gotten lost? And they say, you know what, if someone had been lost, we would see it. And they just kind of, like, shoo it off. And um, one of the men warns um, Harold to be careful about the dirt because it did something to his skin. It looked like he had a ringworm or something. It was, like, a weird rash on his arm. Philip um, goes over to see his dad, and he sees the doggy, the blind doggy. The doggy is, like, sitting there with no water in his dish. Philip is just pissed off, and he's, like, trying to fill the, the dish with water. And his father comes along. Jack and Jack is just mad because um Philip broke the arm of the man that was tailing him. And to get back at Phil, he mentioned something about his mother wanting to have an abortion, but he talked her out of it and how um right now Jack's girlfriend is pregnant, he's gonna do the right thing and be a good dad and it's just it's so messed up. Hope I kinda wish that like before the end of the season we find out you know, what happened between Mar Marie and Jack that broke them up. I really honestly want to know because with this episode, like, he's being very petty. And I'm just like, what the hell happened to break these two up? Um, let's see. Phil takes the dog with him because he just gets tired. Because, like, the first time he saw him, the dog was just, like, in a cage and... Now he's just like he's taking him and Jack was having a fit. Rachel comes home to see her father sitting. Rachel is um Rachel Jensen. That's Harold's daughter, Harold and Jean's daughter. She arrives home from school to see her father sitting at the top of the steps. He takes um both daughters, Rachel and Kate, 
to their grandfather and grandmother's house, um, Jean's parents, so that they can keep a close eye on the girls. Or should or should he have said, he actually should have said Rachel because Rachel is just out of control completely. Sky Vander Dean is the new character. She popped up last episode because she's a lawyer for the Lenape tribe. Um, she's like sitting there eating by herself. Um, Phil goes over, he like talks to her and they start talking about the past and how they went to school and how Phil was in school and she knows a little bit about what's going on with him and Mike comes in to tell him that there's a guy that tipped them off about, I guess, about the nursing home and he wants more pills. And uh, Phil is just like, listen, this is not the time and tell that guy go on, whatever. Sky wants to see Phil again. She wants him to come up to her grandmother's house and, um, or her, it's either her grandmother or mother's house and she'll cook dinner for him and they can talk. Jean, um, is at the psychiatric hospital sitting in the room with the doctor. The doctor knows she can hear voices. He's asking her, when did the voices start? And she says, you know what, it started when I was pregnant with my first. So I guess it's her psychosis or delusions began during postpartum depression maybe and they just were never treated so they just continued on. Rachel's wandering around the grandparents house and she sees a bunch of trophies and she sees a book and in the book there's a clipping and in the clipping there's like something that's written on there and there's like an arrow up and it said we grew together and I'm trying to figure out did um, Jean write that or did her brother Brian write that? I, for some reason, thought it was Jean. Um, Rachel's creeped out, and she just sticks the thing back in the books. She opens the door and pulls out a suitcase, and there's a tape player and some cassettes. She hears Jean's brother talking about something about a bumblebee or a bumblebee dying on the um, in the driveway or something, and Rachel's staying in the car with that Copus kid, and she won't come out. I hope she doesn't get hit by lightning or something, and she just ended the tape because she thought she heard... Rachel ended the tape because she thought she heard something. Then she listens to another one, and Brian's, like, obsessed with ghosts, and I think, like, he and Jean, both Jean and um, Brian had something wrong with them, like, they're mentally ill a little bit, or they're off, something wasn't right. Junior's at this um, high school party. He's, like, selling the pills that he, he um, was given, I guess, from Phil and Mike, and he's selling them, and these guys come over. And they start hassling him, and then they jump him, and they take his pills. Marie goes to wake up Junior the next morning, and he sees she sees he's all beat up, and she's asking, and he doesn't really want to talk about it. Marie reveals that she has cancer. So in that episode, when they were talking about get the car ready or something, it wasn't just when Jean and Paige. Paige is the girl that was um that's pregnant. Um, that they showed in episode one and episode two, when, um, Jean was like, get the car ready. Jean was talking about, I guess, going to the hospital, maybe going to the doctor, along with going to, um, the police station, I guess, maybe. Um, she tells Junior to pull it together, stop getting in trouble, because she doesn't have that much time left, and just to shape up. Harold sees a car driving, pulls it over, and sees that it's Mike Parker in the car. And Mike was dumb enough to leave his stash of pills in his car, and Harold finds him after he pulls Mike out and searches him and does the whole nine. Um, Rachel returns to her grandparents' house to see that the suitcase is gone with all the cassettes. Her grandfather's, like, standing there, and her grandfather, I don't know, her granddad is kind of weird. In this season, because he's like, it's like he's trying, like, everybody in this, in this show, for the most part, is trying to cover something up in some way. But the grandfather is, like, one of the top dirty people in here, because he's always seemed like he's trying to cover something. Um, he thought that his wife had thrown out, I guess, the cassette tapes. He didn't think it was healthy to dig up the past. She goes into the room where she's staying and she pulls out the cassette tape, so the cassette player. So when I thought she put everything away, she didn't. She, I guess she must have come back later and taken that out with a couple of tapes. I'm speculating a couple of tapes because we didn't see any tapes in her pocketbook. Harold interrogates Mike about the pills. Mike's kind of being a bit of a smart ass. Um, Harold knows that Mike was involved in the robbery of a nursing home. 
which of course we know he was from the beginning of the episode. Phil comes to see Harold at the station and tells Harold to let Mike off with a warning. And Harold's like, well, no, but I guess, I guess it's an eye for an eye since Phil is keeping the tribe from, like, really going in on the um, Jensen family. I guess Harold owes him. And Harold calls off the cops. I think this is like the strike two for Harold and his suspicious behavior. Because first it was the whole thing with the car at the house in the garage. And then now it's, um, he's supposed to book somebody. Now he's not booking somebody. Harold's not looking very good. Um, Phil is talking to Junior, um, telling him that he needs to go see Jack. He needs to get money, give him the money. But he gives him like a wad of cash, but tells him, you take your cut and give him his cut, and that's it, just to get a gun, and ask about Junior's eye. Junior tells him what happened, and Philip says that they'll come back for more, he said, and charge them triple. He talks about how he was beat up so bad, his face swole up like a pumpkin, and it made him stronger. Then we see Junior walking towards the train tracks um, in Walford, and I'm wondering, is this show really, like, filmed on location in New Jersey, or is it filmed down south of the with the sign-up? Either way, wherever they chose, it does look like like, up there in the mountains in New Jersey. Like, that's how it looks over there. Um, and I think seeing those New Jersey transit signs are pretty awesome. I really like those signs. It's like old school signs, because they've basically updated the signs, but in certain towns in the state, they still have those old ones, and I think that's pretty cool. Rachel comes running and sneaks out to go with him to Brooklyn. Skye tells um, Philip about her first powwow and how she danced it with Marie. Um, she wonders why... Phil's uncle doesn't like him, and Phil doesn't know. Skye is present. Basically, Skye's role in all of this whole mess is to help with the paperwork to get the tribe recognized by the federal government, as well as help the Morgan family, you know, the family of the little boy who was, um, who was hit by the car. You can tell Philip likes Skye because there's something going on between them. Beyond the fact that in real life, um, the two actors, uh, Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet, are, um married and have two kids together so there's a lot of chemistry in that and it was a cute little scene um and he's not sure why he came back to um the Lenape reservation but he thanks her for dinner and remembers her from the bus stop I guess they're going to see each other again Rachel and Junior are in Brooklyn now they go inside um Jack's house into some sort of impromptu baby shower where the mother is like snorting crack because if Jack is crazy, I'm sure the woman having the baby by him is just as crazy. Jack tells Junior that he's Phil's father and says something about Phil being a murderer at age 8. Which I don't know whether to believe, but then there's so many secrets on this show that they're slowly coming through the cracks. And for some, they will kind of go over. You might have to rewatch the episode again to get it, but I, I caught it pretty quickly. Um... He says he ended up moving to Brooklyn because bad things happened in those mountains. That's why I moved here, and I wonder what bad things he's referring to. Jack gives him guns and bullets, but Junior needed to get a 9 millimeter, and Jack wouldn't give it to him, so Jack like puts a gun in his face. And Junior, Junior basically, when Jack leaves, takes the 9 and... And is about to leave when Jack wants to switch out the guns. And Junior's like, no, I'm out of here. So Junior and Rachel get a hotel room. Junior puts down his gun and they make love. Um, Phil sees Mike with the man who wants more pills. And he says, okay, I'm going to go get him. And he goes and he gets the doggy that's blind. And the man gets freaked out and he runs away. Little does he know that Harold is parked down the road and he follows the man home pushes him in and basically blackmails him to talk and the, the man reveals that the kid was buying drugs from Mike and Phil before he died. Specifically Mike because I think Phil just got out of prison so it's probably Mike. And Rachel is, and then it cuts off. Rachel's questioning why Junior's helping Phil and she thinks it's crazy because he hasn't known him long and he just tell, he has enough of her. Basically calls her a poor, spoiled little white girl and Tells her to shut up, tells her that um, everyone thinks that your mother hit Paul. And Rachel's in denial, but I don't know how much in denial you can be considering that you can tell your mother is unraveling slowly, but I guess, I guess she's like her father and she's definitely not paying attention. Um, so she has an argument 
like I said before, with Junior, and Junior tells her to find her own way home. Then we see Phil playing with the dog inside, and he gets a knock on the door, and when he opens the door, like the first door, he sees something tacked to the door, and it's a missing persons poster with the college kid's face on it with the words, I know. So I think Harold put that there. Harold visits Jean, and Jean swears that she hit the boy. She's asking about him. How's he doing? Is he all right? Is he okay? Um, different things like that. And she just feels confused, and Harold just basically compounds that confusion because he's just like, you know what? She's like, I made, she's saying, you know what, I made the wrong statement. He's saying, well, you know, um, you made up in your mind, your mind created it, don't even worry about it. And that's basically where the episode ends. So my take on this episode is that um, this is like the third, I guess you call it the middle episode of the season. Um... I think that uh, we're going to learn more about uh, Marie and Jack's relationship pretty soon since Marie is getting sick. All this stuff I th is eventually going to catch up with ha with uh, Phil. Harold is going to get caught in one of his own lies. Jean is going to remember everything vividly once these pills start kicking in and that's going to be her albatross and she's going to be done after that. But this episode was really good. Um, I hope you guys can follow me in my review because sometimes my reviews I tend to jump around a little bit because I, I take that's why I take notes because I take notes and I stay on topic so anywho thanks for tuning in and I really like this episode and I can't wait till episode four so if you enjoyed this review and any other review on my plan on my channel definitely definitely subscribe and check out my Twitter page Sage Valentine my blogger blog uh, I hope you can handle it and WordPress is the truth is so anywho guys uh, thanks for tuning in and have an awesome day and if you like this video definitely a thumbs up so see you around and my next video after this is Hannibal so stay tuned guys bye bye guys mm <laughs>